Okay. So Orlin, I, I showed you this slide about what an experiment is. Let's quickly walk through what the process of running an effective experiment looks like. So the first step is really, is really this idea of formulating falsifiable hypotheses. And so a lot of people kind of skip this step and they go out and again succeed at seeing what happens because they don't really have anything they want to concretely measure. And so whatever results they get, they can rationalize in retrospect. So the way that you actually do that is you have to create a very concrete statement that can be quantitatively or even sometimes qualitatively measured. And it has to be falsifiable, which comes again from the scientific method. So it's, it's sometimes harder to explain this concept, easier to kind of illustrate it. So I'll use this as an example. So this is a case where I've got two statements. The first is being known as an expert will drive early adopters. So the problem with that first statement is that it's really too vague. I mean, I might, I might be here, I might, I might be giving a, a talk and ask people to sign up for my product. And as a result of that, maybe 10 people sign up. Um, tomorrow I might tweet something or I might write a blog post and I get another 20, 30 people sign up. At the end of the week, say I get 100 signups. Did that really prove or disprove the hypothesis? I don't quite know. Because I'm not, you know, if I just, if I just wanted to see what happened, I, at the end I got 100 signups. And if I, if, if I think that's good enough, I probably just stick with that number and rationalize my way and say that's, that validates the assumption and move on. Um, but a more rigorous way of doing that <coughs> would be finding a specific action that I'm going to do, like writing a blog post, and then having an expected outcome, like driving 100 signups and then doing that one action and seeing if that really produced the result. And initially your judgment is going to be way off. You're going to come up with numbers that, that probably will not, you know, will, will, that, that, they're numbers that will not quite work. Um, instead of 100 signups, you might get only 10 or 20 signups. But that's part of the process. With, with what we're doing here, we're trying to hone our judgment. We're trying to make these predictions, trying to test our assumptions on what we think you know, will actually work and then do these little experiments to see if they, they will or will not. So if this doesn't produce a viable result, it doesn't mean that I kind of give up and go home. But it tells me that maybe, maybe, um, maybe my, my expert status is not as good as I thought it to be, or blogging is not really the right channel for this particular segment. And so I might come up with another experiment to run and see if I can get something that, that refutes or, or validates what I'm trying to test. And so a good formula for, for formulating these hypotheses is one that looks like this, is finding a specific repeatable action so I can write multiple blog posts that will yield a specific expected measurable outcome. And so the example of the blog post will drive 100 early signups kind of fits in that, in that kind of definition. So that's a good kind of template to use if, you, if you're kind of struggling with how do you structure those kind of statements. The other thing that's kind of very important is creating accessible dashboards. And this is something that is more easily kind of said than done. So a lot of people, especially first-time entrepreneurs, look at their startups as their baby. They don't really want to share the bad news with anyone. And so they tend to practice more of a success theater. They only share the good news and kind of hide, hide away the bad news. But it's very important if you want to really get kind of concrete, actionable advice, even from your advisors, to really put this stuff out there. Um, so this is an example of one of the early dashboards we had. Actually, I think it's even for the Cloudfire product. Um, actually, no, it's a different one. But it kind of shows on a weekly basis all the interview results. Actually, on a daily basis, all the interviews we were doing and what were the numbers we were collecting. We were also tracking who we spoke with and, and, and all, the, all the tactical details around that. And we would make this website available to everyone on the team. So whether it was an advisor or it was somebody internally in the company, they were all able to see this and all able to see the learning. Um, and the idea of that was to be able to give our advisors kind of the, the, the tools they needed to be able to kind of go into the numbers and really question the ways we are testing these, these hypotheses and maybe give us like, like real concrete suggestions. So in, in the past when I was building BoxCloud and some of the earlier products, I had advisors and I would have these monthly calls with them and again, practice more of success theater. I would tell them, you know, we ran all these experiments, you know, things didn't quite work well, but we're still doing well, you know, we're on track. And they would be like, oh, that's great because they're super busy. They're not going to take any more time than, than needed. So the, the, the question they would ask me is, how can, how can I help you? And I would just draw a blank. I'd be like, well, you know, I don't know. I guess everything's good. And we'd hang up the phone. And that was just an advisory call that was just lost. It was like an opportunity lost. Um, with something like this, when you actually go out there and you're, you're showing them data, it's like the, it's like the Jerry Maguire thing. It's you're helping them help you. You're basically showing what's working, what's not working. And they are able to then like, automatically look to offer solutions. They look to, they'll, they'll say, like, I can see this is not working. Maybe the experiment should be structured this way, or you should run something different. You should try something more drastic. 
So I found that to be a, a very compelling way, but it is a hard, um, it, it, it is a hard psychological thing to get over to put all this data out there because in the beginning the data is not going to be pretty, but that's that's what um, fundamentally a lot of what we are doing here is about is is being very objective with with what we want to achieve with our startups. You're doing that early. Absolutely, yeah. Whatever works, it could be a Google. It could yeah. So so I would say you know whatever works for you. I, I will kind of. I will kind of plug Lean Canvas and say that's exactly where we're, we're going with Lean Canvas, is that initially that's, that product started out as a, as, a, um, as a brainstorming tool that I was using in workshops just to do for that, just to be used for that initial brainstorming. But we're actually moving more into what Eric likes to call innovation accounting. So being able to take the product that we're building, the, the business model we're building, and start to measure progress along the way and share that progress with your extended team, whether it's internal, external st stakeholders, and make that friction of sharing that information very, very low. So it doesn't have to even be a face-to-face -face call. It could be through the online tool. Notification goes up. I'll show you an example here of a report that we are kind of toying with. Um, but this would be an example of, so what I showed you just a slide earlier was very tactical information. That's still too much information for a busy advisor to like dig into and really go down to like what were those um, interview results you had. But down here we actually do a more kind of 3,000 foot summary and this, this is run every, you know, depending on what your iteration length is. It could be two weeks, it could be a month. But what we summarize on this report is what we thought was going to happen in this month. So those were the assumptions, the hypotheses we had what actually happened. So as a result of running these experiments, whether they were interviews, whether they were building features, this is what we actually learned. And then this is what's next. So based on that learning, this is what we're going to go do next. And all this is great. The left-hand side is great. It's about you know, what, what we thought would happen, what actually happened, what we're going to do next. Now you have to check that with real progress because it's very easy to, to again, practice um, busy work. You can say we're, we're making all this, we're doing all this learning, we're, we're going to take that learning and apply it to the product. But unless those numbers start to, to show some movement in the upward direction, you're still spinning your wheels. And so it's very important to have the key metric. And here I show revenue, but it doesn't have to be revenue specifically. It could be number of signups. It could be number of uh, users retained, number of users activated, depending on whatever uh, stage of startup you're in. But being able to show that we are running these experiments and our goal is to improve this one key metric. And as a result of that, we can see the metric go up or not. And if it is going up, then we're on the right track. We're going to do more of it. If it's not going up, you know, we're open to like um, suggestions on how we can we can run bolder experiments to get there. I think it. I think it varies on. It, it, yeah. So I think it. I think it definitely varies by the. Um, by, by your own frequency and how often you, you, you have meetings with them. I would say at a minimum once a month is, is, is a good, I mean that's a good uh, time to, to use. But if you're iterating really fast, then every two weeks might also be, be fine. Sure, and, and internally, like I would suggest doing it even on a weekly basis. If you've got a team of people, you can, you can start to like look at your results on a weekly basis. And so over here we show the key metric and then here we have the canvas. And after every one of these iterations, if we need to update the canvas, we go back to it and we make, we make updates to it. Because again, it's important to keep that as a living document. And we, we want to annotate like what was the last state and what we updated so it's kind of visually, visually clear there. So in some ways this is your, this is your tactical um, metrics and these are, this is your strategy that you are kind of bringing together to, to, to chart this, this plan forward.